Hello, and welcome to another Graylog instructional video. In this video, I wanted to go over the processing and data enrichment functions of Graylog. Now, what does that mean? What you've seen is when you collect logs, you'll get a screen like this, which is our search window, and you'll have all kinds of logs coming in. If I zero in on one log, this is from a firewall, normally you would see this full message field. It's a long line of data, all the information's in there, but it's just not very readable. So what we want to do is transform that and add additional enrichment to it, such as geolocation lookup, IP tables lookup maybe against a database of known addresses, and is this any of these IPs in this log part of a threat intelligence feed? So what we're going to get is things like you can see up top here where we're saying destination countries and cities names. Um, you'll go down here towards the bottom and you can start to see that I, I did tie this to a threat IDS and I'm looking it up. What, you know, in this case, it's a, a scan on 3389 against the firewall. So all that's done through our enrichment uh, functions inside of the pipeline processing tabs. So I wanted to go over how to get those configured and set up uh, and then show you uh, an example processing pipeline. We won't actually write one in this video, but I wanted to show it to you. We'll have different videos on how to write pipe processing pipelines. So where to start? The first thing you want to do is go up to your system and go to your configuration tab. And there's a few things to look at in here. The first one I want to talk about is this message processor configuration. Um, I would recommend setting it in this exact order that I have here, message filter chain, the processing pipeline, and then the GOIP. And you'll notice that sometimes if you reverse these around, usually message pipelines after processing pipelines, a lot of your processing filters won't work. You won't be able to parse your data in the, right, the way that you're expecting. Different threat lookups won't work because they're outside of the normal processing chain. So this is the recommended way to set it up. Just keep that in mind. Um, and then if you come down here, we'd want to enable all these plugins for threat intelligence. By default, they come disabled. So if you come here and say configure, you can then check box each one of these. That would make sense that you want to use, want to use in your environment. And once you check those, they'll turn to enabled. Um, and then the last one on the same page is really the geolocation processor. So this one is a two-step process, and if I look at the gray log documentation here, you'll see that it talks about downloading the database first. So you have to come out here and you can download. I use the GeoLite 2 database, but I download that file, and then I put it on the server itself. And you can see it's here in the Etsy gray log server folder, and it's just the GeoLite 2 city MMDB file. Once you put that file there, and you can go ahead and enable this, and you can give it your level. Like I like it down to the city database, you can do it to the country as well. Um, and once that's done, then you can use this function going forward in different processing pipelines, which we'll talk about here in just a second. All right, so we set the processing order, we've turned on the threat intelligence feeds, and we've also done the geolocation processor. The last thing for additional context or additional enrichment of logs is what we're gonna do is look up tables, and then we'll write the processing pipeline. So a lookup table, I'm going to start here. Some of them are pre-built in here, um, different threat exchanges, which we use, and I'll, we'll show that in the processing pipeline. But if you want to add your own, I've added one around home by P. And we'll start over here on the data adapters page. This is where everything starts off. This is really describing what where you're going to get your data from. So if I pick on this home IP, you'll see that I have a file inside my server as well, the home IP CSV file. And what that's going to do is give a list of addresses to host names. And just to quickly show you what that looks like, is if I you know do a f first few uh, items there, you can see I have an IP address and a host field, and then I put the IP addresses in here. So my firewall is you know, dot one and my printer is dot five. So anytime I want to use that, I can you know look up an IP and exchange the IP for the name itself. So I can do a, you know a test look up here if I type in. You know, that 5, which is the printer, it's going to come back as a printer. So now with any log message coming in with 10.0.0.5, I can exchange that for a printer if I want to, if I call this lookup table in my processing pipeline. All right, so now going into the processing pipelines and how they work. I'm going to pick on the PFSense one, which is the firewall one, just mostly because there's many stages in here, just to show you what you can do with this. And it does almost every portion of what we've shown so far. So this first stage in here, if you think of a stage as the order that they're going to be processed in, this first stage here is going to parse the base data out. So if I open up one of these and show you, you can see here this is when true. It's just saying you know, when there's a log message coming in and you want to set the, set the field source, 
the pfSense filter log. It's just gonna rename the field. And so instead of having maybe the host name, you're gonna have the pfSense filter log. It's another way to search on that data. We can remove fields in here. So we're gonna remove the facility name. It's not really needed for us. And then we're gonna do some basic regexing. So you'll see here that we do parse out certain fields and then we put them into different uh, action fields down here, you know, different rule numbers interfaces. But the majority of this one in rule nine here is that we're gonna put in specific data. And we wanna use this because we wanna do that in a different processing stage. If you get really long processing rules, complex ones, you can break them apart into different stages. So you pull off pieces of that information as you go throughout this process. And then at the very end, you just end it and close that out. So that broke apart the initial data set. And now we can go ahead and parse that IPv4 data. All right, so this one here is saying it's looking for that specific data field that we just created in the last rule. And it also has an IP ver version of four. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do that same regex on the fields again. And again, we'll create a different video on how to do all of this. Uh, but what this is gonna do here is gonna break apart everything. And the key one here is look at these source and destination addresses. So these are custom set. You can name these however you want. We like to recommend keep them similar. So source adder is always gonna be the source address and destination is always gonna be the dest adder. That way, as you create different rules inside the processing pipelines like geolocation lookups, you can always reference the source underscore adder to do the lookup on it or, or destination underscore adder. And then you can see here, we also put in the protocol specific data. So there's extra stuff in there that we want to process at a later state. So we'll do that in the protocol specific data. And then if I come down to stage three or stage two here, that's where the protocol specific data comes in. Um, it's the same process here. If you have a TCP UDP, it's going to break them apart and put them into different you know, ports and how long the packet was, et cetera. Now, once you have all that data out, now we have the IP address and the source underscore adder and the destination port. Then we can start running through and say, well, in this stage, it's is it an internal or external address? So this is always a great one to do too. If you're setting up your own network and you say, I know my internal address is always gonna be 10.0.0 in my case, I can set that to my internal address and that say, you know, source address is internal if it matches that, or destination address is internal if it matches that. So you can say if it's an internal or external address automatically. And then you can do different searches based upon that. Maybe you only care if, um, an external address has a thread on it. So you could say, if it's not internal, tell me that. And then if I come down here a little farther, this is where all the enrichment comes in is in stage four. And I won't go through each one of these, but you can see we have different threat intelligence lookups, GOIP lookups, and OTX lookups. So I'll run through a couple of them here. If I look at the geolocation on the source address, what you can see is if it has that source address, which we broke apart in the second processing stream, and then it has a field called source address is internal. And then you can say here, and the message is source address is internal equals false, which means it's not an internal IP address because we don't want to do geolocation on an internal address. Then go ahead and process. And it says, let the geolocation look up. So I'm gonna look up against GeoIP, where it's that source address field. So that source address field that we met before, we want to run it against GeoIP. And GeoIP is gonna be a built-in function I and mean, all the functions are based over here. You can search through all these if you want to and kind of look through those. But once you run it against the GOIP, there's gonna be different fields. And then we wanna map those in. So upon initial GOIP function lookup, you're gonna get the coordinates, the country code, and the city name. And we wanna put those into something a little more readable. So kind of following that same structure of source address, we wanna just say source address, geolocation, geo country, and geo city. And as we set all those fields, it's gonna be put into the log message. We're gonna append that data to the original log message. That's part of that enrichment process. So now we have all that geolocation data there for the source address. You can do the same thing for the destination address. And then as well, you can do those with the threat intelligence. The other one that we seen on that initial log view that I showed you that was an OTX lookup. What we're doing is taking that same source address and then we're gonna look that up against uh, the OTX threat feeds. So we're gonna say an OTX lookup IP, which is another one of these functions over here. And then we wanna go ahead and look that up. And then when we do find one in there, we're gonna say there's gonna be a few fields here, you know, threat indicated, threat IDS, or threat names. And then we can put those in these additional fields. So what that's gonna let you do then is add all that data up, transform, transforming it from that original message that you saw this full message here, 
to having all this additional data, the source addresses along with the city names that, are, that have came in, and was there a threat indicated? In this case, there was not a threat indicated on this log. But you can see how, how much more robust all this data is now because of that enrichment, where now you can do additional searches inside of here. You know, maybe you really only really care about, it, is there a threat indicated? So you could say inside of here, and click up there, and click that plus, and then you wanna change this, instead of false, because mine was false, I wanna say true. And say, show me everything in the last five minutes that had a threat indicated true, and there's only one so far. So because of that threat enrichment, you can look for just attacking or, or, or logs with threats in them, and you can see kind of that response. And then here you can take this and put it into dashboards and do it into views if you want to. But hopefully this helped a little bit as far as taking that original log message, what functions to turn on in the processing pipeline, and then a couple examples of how to take that source IP address and put it through different filters such as geolocation lookup, threat intelligence lookups, and then showing you the outcome of all this data from that log. Again, this can be applied to any type of logs. You can apply it to, to Windows logs, Linux logs, anything that has an IP address in it, um, or if you just wanna take any field and enrich that data. Thanks for watching this video, and happy logging.